Well, thoracic aneurysm simply is a, a dilatation or a bulging out on an artery. Specifically, when people say thoracic aneurysm, they're talking about the aorta, which is the big blood vessel running through your chest. It's a, it's a straight tube normally, but there might be a part that's bulging out. And that weak spot in the artery is dangerous for rupture and dissection. And many times that can be related to a genetic abnormality with the proteins in the wall of the aorta being weak. It can be related to medical conditions such as high blood pressure or smoking or things such as that that damage the wall of the artery. How we repair it depends on the location, the age of the patient, and other factors such as that. Now, as far as who's a candidate, really anybody with an aneurysm of a certain size or a symptomatic aneurysm or one that is actively leaking is a candidate for surgery. The only caveat to that would be someone has severe medical comorbidities that would preclude open surgery. And in those situations, many times we can still treat the patient with an endovascular stent repair rather than an open repair. How we decide whether to do the stent repair or the open repair depends on a lot of factors, mainly their age and their ability to undergo open surgery. Endovascular techniques are great because the comorbidities are very low, meaning that you'll be out of the hospital quickly. The only downside to the endovascular stuff is we have to monitor it more closely since this is, this is a newer technology, and you'll have to get uh, frequent x-rays and CT scans. But in the older, frail patient, the endovascular really shines, meaning the stent repair. In the younger patient where we're going to need a sturdy repair for 30, 40 years, 20 years, many times we'll go with the open repair. Open surgery versus endovascular surgery. Let's talk about the open surgery first. The benefits of the open surgery, it's a traditional technique, tried and perfected over the past 30 years, 30 to 40 years. And we tend to reserve that for younger patients, people who are good, good candidates for open surgery. Now, if you, if you move into patients who are old or frail, who may not tolerate an open procedure as well, we tend to, to move towards endovascular techniques, which are the newer techniques the more cutting-edge techniques with stents up through the groin or through a vessel in your arm to exclude the aneurysm, to take the pressure off the aneurysm so it can't rupture. The benefit of the open procedure in a young patient is we can fix it and they can go about their life. And we don't have to do any more imaging. The endovascular procedure accomplishes the same goal, but you may need a CT scan at 6 months or 12 months. And occasionally we have to do a touch-up procedure where there's a little, a little part of the stent needs to be pushed up. But those procedures are minor in comparison to another open procedure. Well, I think if you're diagnosed with an aneurysm, it's nothing to panic about. I think we have techniques these days that can fix these aneurysms very safely and reproducibly. Nowadays, these procedures may be as short as a one- or two-day hospitalization with an endovascular case or a five- to seven-day hospitalization. In a few weeks of recovery, then you're back to your life and relieved that you don't have that problem anymore. So I think this is our, the techniques. Oh, we're, all, we're constantly advancing and improving, and we're on the cutting edge here with our techniques. But we're also using many techniques which are tried and true. Um, I think that people should understand that.